Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, we have Senator Tyrone Thompson here. Yeah. All the way from North Las Vegas. Senator Ozzy Fumo here. My senator, and I take this personally. We got we got our next congresswoman from this district right here, Susie Lee. <laughs> we have our current congressman from the North Las Vegas area and elsewhere right here, Ruby <laughs> Cooley. <laughs> You're gonna be hearing from a very special congressman that we have in town, Mr. Ellison. Yeah. Yeah. Without further ado, let me tender the mic, if you will, to Senator Woodhouse. <laughs> Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Yes, I'm Joyce Woodhouse, and I represent Senate District 5. Uh, we are in Assembly District 21 right now, but I am Thank so happy here. with the support that Ozzy and Leslie have given me uh, as we have fought this recall ever since August 2nd. Um, it was a shock when uh, that petition was dropped, um, but everyone came together. We have been knocking on doors. Every day of the week, the only day I don't walk is Sunday, but some people do. So the message is out there seven days a week. The national phone bankers all over the state, Washoe Democrats, Washoe teachers, Douglas County Democrats, everybody is helping with uh, the phone banking. And uh, so all I can say is the message at the doors, and we'll talk to you more later for those of you that are going to walk about what we're hearing. but. Uh, our walkers are talking about uh, what I bring to the state senate: uh, education, health care, uh, veterans, seniors, and then uh, making sure that Nevada has a solid budget by which the state can operate every year. Uh, and working with my colleagues, like Senator Ford said, uh, that is the name of our game, and that is we all work together. You all are here because you helped make that happen. So. I want to thank you so much for being here, helping us today, knock on doors again, and we have about 10 more days to go, and then we hope this is all over. Right. Yes. Yeah. Woo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very best friends. He was in the Senate, and now we have him in Congress, Ruben Keeman. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, are we ready to retain Senator Woodhouse? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, ready to go knock on some doors? Yeah. yeah. Look, first and foremost, we want to say thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time to be here on a Saturday uh, to come out and help a great public servant here in Nevada. Now, I don't represent this area, but I also take this personal. You know, as some of you know, before getting elected into Congress, I served for six years in the State Senate. Joyce and I, jo Joyce and I sat next to each other in our committee in education. And let me tell you, there's nobody who has worked harder to improve our education system in Nevada than Joyce Woodhouse. And I've seen it firsthand. As you all know, our education system has had a lot of challenges here in Nevada. And when the governor came to the Democratic caucus and said, we want to improve revenue, increase revenue for the state, we sat down. It was Senator Ford, Joyce Woodhouse, myself, and a few others. <laughs> And let me tell you, she fought for every single penny that we invested in 2015, which was the largest investment in our education uh, system in Nevada history. That's right. And that was thanks to Joyce Woodhouse. Absolutely. And because of that, Senator Day. But, you know, this is personal. They can't win on election day, so now they're trying to recall our elected officials, that is setting a bad precedent right. here in Nevada Park. They're trying to steal these positions. Joyce Woodhouse won overwhelmingly. It wasn't even a close race. And now, since they can't defeat her next year, they're trying to recall her. So what we're doing here today is the most important thing that we could be doing. Going directly to the voters yeah. and asking them to decline. That's right. And so we want to say thank you. I know we have some folks here from the DNC as well who are here from out of town. Thank you for coming out here. Y'all could be right now at the casinos, at the pool, gambling, playing the, the tables, but you're here. And so we wanna say thank you. 
And then lastly, I do want to introduce our next speaker and a special guest that we have here in Nevada. Uh, somebody that really doesn't need any introduction. <coughs> but in the last 10 months, since I got elected into Congress, I've had the opportunity to serve with him. We both serve on the same committee, the House Financial Services Committee, which is uh, used to be the Banking Committee. And let me tell you, this is a true public servant for the people. He is a fighter for the consumers. I've seen him in action in committee. Just like I saw Joyce when we were in the State Senate, I've seen Keith Ellison in action. And let me tell you, nobody speaks with more passion and with more heart than Keith Ellison. He fights for the little people. Let me tell you, when those big banks come and testify in front of our committee, Keith Ellison takes them on, head on. And he's not afraid to ask those tough questions. So we're very grateful. We're very grateful that he has taken a time from his very busy schedule to come here and to share a few words with us. So with no further ado, Keith Ellison, everybody. So we got to decline to sign. Decline to sign. Decline to sign. Let me tell you, I, I really want to say thank you for that beautiful introduction. Ruben and I, we do all we can to make sure that people can keep some of their money and that they don't lose it in fees and tricks and accounts that get open and they didn't even ask them to be open. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. We try to protect the consumer. We do it all the time. But all that we do on these committees and in the state legislature uh, depends upon you guys sending us there. We cannot be in these seats trying to fight for people to have better pay, keep the money they earn, keep us out of war unless we have to be. None of these uh, wars are just voluntary wars, you know what I mean? Uh, the bottom line is we got to be uh, campaigning and talking to folks if we are hope to be in power so that we can protect the public. So your work here today is absolutely fundamental. Now I want you to tell folks about how great Joyce is, talk to her about, talk about how her education record is awesome, talk to her about how she really cares about people, talk to her about how she's in the community all the time. But if you can, also talk to them about just the principle of this recall just being wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't get what I wanted for Christmas, so I'm a recall Santa. <laughs> I mean, you, you, no, we had an election. We've done this. They are wasting public money on this. Yep, yep. And they call themselves fiscally conservative. Right, right. You know, it's ridiculous. Talk about the principle of just, just rule of law, just a representative democracy where you have an election. We can't have an election every year just because you lost. We gotta have elections at the appointed time. So there's a principle here to defend as well. Joyce is not afraid to stand up and go before the voters at the right and proper time, am I right? That's correct. She's okay with that. But just dragging her around, wasting her time, coming when the election is not even supposed to be there, is taking her mind off of your kids. Right. But don't worry about it, she's still focused on your kids, right? <laughs> but, but that's just because she's awesome like that. <laughs> it is, this is a distraction. It is. And it is taking us away from what we're doing. And you might think, well, this is just our Las Vegas thing, our Nevada thing. Let me just assure you, the eyes of the nation are upon you. That's right. All of us across this country are pulling for you. We know this dirty trick they're pulling on you, and we want to be here to fight with you. That's why our chair, Tom Perez, has allocated monies so we can fight with you right here. To, uh, uh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why, you know, I'm honored to be here with you. Uh, let me tell you, uh, them folks who hold up in them casinos, they don't know how beautiful the Nevada sky is. Ain't that the truth? Out, man. This is a, you got a beautiful state. Yeah. Beautiful mountains, beautiful people. You got good folks in this state. And they deserve representative like Joyce Williams. They deserve Aaron. They deserve Ruben. They deserve all you guys who are on the front lines battling every day. But none of us can do nothing without you guys who are knocking these doors making that relationship. Now, let me just say this as I begin to wrap up. The, the, the Democratic Party, who you may have come to know over the last decade, is changing. <laughs> We've literally changed the mission of the organization. The Democratic Party that you knew as a party that was focused on the presidential, fighting every four years, you know, 
every four years, I gotta see you guys. I'm sure. So, you know, uh, the, you know, the fight number. I've four. always looked up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just that. You know, you know, the Democratic Party is fighting on, uh, fighting every four years, fighting in the presidential, heavy on fundraising, heavy on television, but could do a little bit more in terms of grassroots organizing. That party is no more. The Democratic Party of today is a party that fundamentally is about grassroots organizing. Fundamentally is about building a durable, lasting relationship between the party and the American person. It is a party that says we are going to be active in every race, not just the presidential. Right. We want, we're going to be there if the, if the board of soil conservation is having an election, a Democrat's going to win. That's right. <laughs> if, if the board of water and the co-op board and the ag community is having an election, the Democrat's going to win. We are here to fight at the local level, the city council, the park board, the state legislature, the county, all throughout, everywhere, up and down. And our method is relationship between us and American people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that you know, we, we believe that the Democratic Party has to be a party that doesn't just rely on television ads. Now, I'm not saying we won't do any more TV ads, but what I am saying is the TV ad is going to add on to the organizing that's happening face to face. Right. Right? It's kind of like the air war and the army, right? We're the army. We're the troops <laughs> on the ground. We're going in there. But any good general knows you can't just have an air force. You got to have an army on the ground. Huh. You got it? Huh. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I knew we'd have some vets up in here. <laughs> but let me tell you, vets, you know, get the concept of public service. They put their lives on the line to protect all of us. But there's more than one kind of public service. You can serve our country in the U.S. services. So that's great. My son does that right now. But you can also serve our country by reaching out to Americans and talking to them about our core value system, a respect for everybody, of public investments like education, of making sure that you can be whatever religion you want to. The Constitution says so. Yes. Right? Yes. And we're not sending nobody away because we never heard that or we heard, right? Right. We believe that we all are in this thing together. All colors, all cultures, all faiths. And maybe you have 10, 12 generations right here in the United States. But if somebody's talking about getting rid of DACA, we take that as a personal offense because that's yeah. our people yeah. they're talking about. Right? right? Yeah. right? Yeah. You know? So we, we gotta say that, that we are all in this thing together. It can't just be the women standing up for women's rights. The men gotta back them up and be there right. too. Right. It can't just be the LGBT community fighting for their rights. The straight folks gotta back them up and say, this is our folks. It's, it's, it's gotta be all for all of us. And so I just wanna say, Ryan. Okay, got about me. I just gotta say this. Uh, Tom Perez, our chair, is extremely tuned into what you guys are doing. I'm tuned into it. All the officers, all the DNC board members are. We were over there at the Valleys having a meeting this weekend. And let me assure you, your recall fight came up many, many times. <laughs> we had a call center where we were calling for you guys. And after we beat these guys, we want you to know that you it's not just a one and done relationship. Right on. We are building on this relationship. <coughs> we are building on it. We're making it bigger. We're making it stronger. And we need to ask you of something as you're fighting this recall. Here's what we want to ask you for. What you're hearing on the ground at the doors, you got to tell us what you're hearing. If folks are telling you rent's too high, we need to know. If the vets are telling you, man, the VA's not getting my thing processed fast enough, we need to know. That was my issue. You know, if 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 if, if the if the schools are saying, look, you know, the teachers are teaching, <coughs> but they don't have enough money, they got to go in their own pocket just to decorate the classroom. We need to know. We need to know what's happening on the ground. Because here's my last point. Often you hear people come up to you, don't they, uh, Senator, and they say, "What's the Democratic message?" I hear it all the time. There is no constellation of words, no arrangement of words in the English language where if you were to just say them, everybody would say, the message, <laughs> the message. 
It doesn't work that way. Let me tell you a little story about Barack Obama. Y'all heard of him? Look at him. Missing. So, <laughs> so, so, so Barack Obama was running for president. And, you know, early election, early in a presidential campaign, it is a slog, man. It's hard. It's tough running for state senator. It's tough running for president, trust me. And one time he was in North Carolina and it was raining and then water was coming down and it was tough and it was not easy. And he didn't want to get up and he had been on the road a lot. And people were like, what? Your name is what? You know? <laughs> so, so one day he gets up about five in the morning, drives for an hour and shows up. It's raining and they're about to go do a canvas. And this little lady, this little African-American lady, older lady, says, you're fired up. And he goes, what, lady? I need, I need my coffee. Fired up, ready to go. And she and he says, yeah, I'm ready to go. You see, fired up, ready to go. Yeah, I, I, maybe I am ready to go. And then he reports telling everybody that that actually kind of fired him up. <laughs> Proving that enthusiasm is contagious. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know that. Yeah. yeah. The message, everybody knows fired up and ready to go now. Yeah. But yeah. it grew out of an organic thing, right? It didn't, fired up and ready to go, didn't come out of no focus group. Mm -hmm. It right. didn't come out of no poll. <laughs> right. You know what? Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well today. What a beautiful day today. It really was. Right now, temperatures, I believe, are getting into the 60s. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because I wanted to respond to some of the recent articles that have been made regarding the idea and the news result that somehow gaming revenue is collapsing. So those of you who have just heard, believe it or not, the fact that a lot of these hotels, a lot of these casinos, are not receiving enough revenue that are meeting their expectations. And the question is, why is that really the case? Why is this exactly happening? Well, there's a number of reasons why I think this is happening. Number one, first of all, you have the tragic shooting that just happened about three, four weeks ago. And that's obviously has caused a lot of people to cancel their trips. But more importantly, and by the way, I just wanted to point out, there's a lot of things that are very fishy about this, believe it or not. And there's a lot of information that they're hiding about a security guard, and they're actually cracking up a legal defense fund to make sure that the truth really gets out there. But I will tell you about that some other time. This is what I'm hearing from 360 Daily Net from Rob Lawyer, and I speak to him. So anyway, as you can see here, you have gaming revenue that is falling. Now, why could that be? Maybe it's because of the fact that the prices of these hotel resorts and services are too high. People are getting very, very sick and tired of going to these. This is really, really, really the problem. You know, you got the resort fees. You have all these different problems. People at many of these hotels, including the one that you see in front of you, they have to pay for parking. People just are not really fans of that, okay? And I've actually seen some reports that Tropicana and the M Resort have experienced an increase in their revenue, believe it or not. This is exactly what is going on. So I guess it seems that James Murren's parking plan for MGM isn't working too shabby. And believe it or not, you got so many Americans that have to pay for housing, college tuition, health care costs, and that's sucking up a lot of their savings and their disposable income out of their pockets. And what is that going to lead to? Well, a lot of people are going to have to cut back traveling long distance and coming here in the middle of the desert so they can spend some bucks. Well, looks like karma is really coming along and the way I see it I think that the CEO of James Murray needs to go he's not doing a good job or what they need to do is they need to provide a plan B form of transportation other than paying for parking and this is why I'm gonna fight for a monorail extension or hopefully some other form of mass transit that's a far far believe it or not more effective 
So what you have is a lot of young people who are millennials and their incomes are not high enough or their incomes are being sucked away from college tuition and student loan debt and they just don't have the kind of money to spend at a lot of these hotels, believe it or not. So this is the problem. This is one of the main reasons why you are seeing hotel revenue that's not meeting expectations. But then again, you have to understand that the customer has changed. You have a lot of people that are foreigners or just immigrants. You have a lot of people that are convention attendees. You have a lot of people that are coming here in the warmer months just to check out the pool parties. And a lot of them could give a rat so much about paying so much for parking, drinks, food, and everything else. Personally, for me, when I go spend my money in the Strip, I only really spend lots and lots of money probably about once every three months. I can tell you that. Like the hotel that you see in front of you, the win they have a buffet in the dinner time for $35. I'd probably go there once every few months to just to check it out. And I go there if I'm pretty, pretty damn hungry. So this is one of the things that you really, really have to consider and you really, really have to keep in mind. So, again, if I think that if the American consumer was better, and I think if many of these companies would stop contributing to politicians that destroy the middle class, I think there would have been more activity. There would have been more and more discretionary income in people's pockets. And believe it or not, you would have seen more activity and more hotel towers. We should have seen more hotel towers around here. But there is more coming pretty soon. I do believe that some hotels are coming, like the Resorts World, that's going to be in front of this darker hotel that you see right here. And so you can, as you can see right here, believe it or not, You've got the Circus Circus, you've got the Stratosphere, you've got the Encore, Wind, Palazzo, Venetian, and on the far end, I believe that is the Treasure Island. So, I guess we have to really, really wait and see, and I'm not really optimistic about the stadium plan. Yes, it will increase room occupancy, but on the other hand, believe it or not, Hopefully, we the taxpayer don't have to foot the bill, and it's not going to bring a lot of other problems such as increasing housing costs, crime, infrastructure, and so forth. And I'm going to really talk to these elected officials about these possibilities, believe it or not. And this is one of the reasons why I believe that Steve Sizilak, the county commissioner, is actually planning to run for governor to really put forward the stadium plan, believe it or not. So, anyway, this is what you have right here. This is really the strip, and I do believe a downturn is going to come. We haven't had a downturn in almost like 10 years, so we'll have to see how this plays out. It's likely that the Raiders Stadium will probably be on hold, but it's really, really hard to say at this point. I can tell you I'm going to have a plan B for my money in the coming years. So anyway, tell me what you guys all think. Tell me what you guys see in the coming years and ahead. Do you think the prices of visiting is too high? I do believe that they should bring it down or at least bring more promotions, more coupons, and I really look forward into that. All right, everybody, take care. Take it easy. Let me know what you guys all think.